Hello everyone, Stakuya here and welcome back to a Hearts of Iron 4 video. You've probably already seen from the artwork. I know that over the course of me doing an A to Z playthrough of Kaiser Redux, the world in which Germany won World War One, that things were going to get batshit and simultaneously that there were going to be nations that I was probably going to greatly regret playing. And if after last time we had a lot of fun as native Alaska and watching the entirety of North America switch over to become genocidal communist Native Americans, uh, which is a mouthful to say already, after everything that we did before with the Bharatiya Commune, it is time to continue with the bees. And do you know what the next bee is that exists after that territory? Well, that would be Bhutan. Now, I'm sure that for a number of you who have played Hearts of Iron before, you're already familiar with what Bhutan is, but there's a number of you that maybe this is your first time and you've never actually heard of this country. You've never looked at anything beyond the major nations of World War II. Well, Bhutan, uh, let me tell you that, uh, th that's not one of them. Bhutan is one of the tiniest nations in the game. This tiny little landlocked country here in the Himalayas wedged in between what was India and then, of course, Tibet. It is, it is a state that, by all means, probably should not exist and only really managed to exist by serving as a buffer zone for the British for so many years. And now, well, the country is somehow even less stable than it was in the original game. Bhutan is a political time capsule with backward society straight out of medieval times. Serfs labor throughout the year to collect enough food to survive, and the little industry exists outside of the cottage workshops of wealthy lords. My friends, we're going to be playing a feudal society in freaking World War II. Well, let's jump into it then. Now, I'm sure you're going to look at me and go, Stack, hey, hold on, why are you actually playing Bhutan? Like, I saw they had some national spirits, but there's no way a nation like this has a focus tree. Uh, that, that's where you're wrong. Yeah, Bhutan, for whatever reason, gets a unique focus tree, whereas many other nations in here do not. But Bhutan gets one. You smug little prick, you, Jigme. We have a grand total population of 300,000 people inside our entire country, and we can not really do anything with it. We still only have 5,000 left. Left, despite being a 3.3% recruitable population, and uh, uh, we, we have no equipment and no ability to produce any because we don't have any military factories. Not only that, but my friends, perhaps one of the worst aspects about this entire thing, we have a single research slot. A single one. That's it. With minus 45% research to it. Every day I live in suffering. So, okay, I guess first things first, uh, research. We're going to need... Uh, doesn't even matter if we get better guns. We don't have factories to produce more guns, so this literally doesn't matter. Just get mechanical engineering so maybe we can research stuff slightly faster. And then on the note, do we have any construction? No. I have zero military factories. I have zero civil... I have no factories. I literally can't produce anything. Do I have any resources? I have one tungsten. One. Are you freaking kidding me? So yeah, probably one of the most powerful stars that we could ever have in the beginning of the game. Definitely, definitely. Uh, our country has precarious central authority because the king doesn't have any real power in here, apparently. The monasteries control large swaths of the country, and there's not really anything that we can do about that. And it's a hermit kingdom with minus 50% to all attack and defense and minus 90% to output. But are you kidding me? Oh, this is so painful. We simultaneously start on isolation with a closed economy. We literally have nothing. It's like if they took every bad trait in the game and combined that into one country, that is Bhutan. That, that's Bhutan. That's what it is. Can I do anything national focus wise? No, nope. Apparently there's going to be a revolution. And I can't do anything because stuff is said to be unstable. So we're going to have to wait and see what actually happens here. How fun. Let's go for it. So what is going on in Bhutan? Well, Bhutan has always been on the periphery of Great Britain's sphere. And when the empire began to collapse, it remained firmly in the periphery, naturally. Following the establishment of a socialist republic in Bengal, Bhutanese statesman Sonam Tokye Dorji managed to negotiate a stable relationship with the Bharatiya commune. Bhutan withdrew from their traditional claims in the Durs and recognized the commune as an independent nation. And in return, the new syndicalist government in Calcutta continued the Raj's pre-revolution economic investment and recognized the sovereignty of Bhutan. With the situation in India heating up and the instability in Bhutan's close northern neighbor Tibet following the death of the 13th Dalai Lama, the kingdom aims to stand as the island of peace and stability amidst this vast sea of chaos. Literally, the game of trying to not do anything. This should be fun. And it's not like we really can do anything because the economy is shit. Oftentimes, the mountain kingdom of Bhutan is regarded as the best example in the world of a nation untouched by the Industrial Revolution. The majority of labor in the country is devoted to subsistence farming, and there's little opportunity to develop any advanced trades. Construction is handled through a system of brutal corvy labor, which means that you've impressed people and forced them to build stuff for you, with impressed villagers laboring to implement building plans which have remained static for the last 400 years. Most production occurs in small cottage workshops where rare skilled artisans ply crafts passed down through the generations. Some of these artisans have been employed by the king personally in the art of weapon crafting, a task which few of them are keen and fewer of them are still common competent because they suck. With the situation in the kingdom tenuous, there's little room for change, but were any one man to solidify their position at the head of the nation, they would certainly want to reform
transform the system. Each rifle is handcrafted. Oh, hey, look, an off-map civilian and military factory. That's nice. So yeah, five days into the game and I get a single mill. Hey, yeah, we're producing. Wait, what? The Himalayan powder keg? Since the reign of the great Zabdrung Nawang Namgyal. Oh my God, I'm going to screw up so many names. Patan has been ruled by the Zabdrung reincarnations who delegated temporal powers to the Drukdesi elected by nobles or Penlops and the Jekimpo elected by the monks. However, over time, these two leaders have come to conspire to eliminate the power of the Zabdrung. And by the 19th century, the country is firmly in the hands of the Drukdesi and Jekimpo. The diarchy was further streamlined when the Penlop of Trongsa, Ungyen Wangchuk crushed his rivals and crowned himself a hereditary monarch in 1907. The kingdom saw a brief period of crisis at the death of King Ungyen in 1905, where amongst the chaos of the Indian Revolution, two claimants, Ungyen's son Jigme and the Penlop of Paro, Teshring Penjor, raced to crown themselves as his successor. Oh, okay. So we have a weak king and there's people who want to profit it, uh, which means it's so much for an island of stability. Activates mission, fading control. Fading control? What do you mean fading control? I'm not doing anything. Oh. Oh my god, there's an entire thing over here to reform Bhutan? Yeah, so Bhutan lags far behind most of the nations of the world with an army made of barely trained and equipped peasant levies. So to reform, we have to deal with three different things. We have central authority, which is the amount of control of the central government. We have to develop ourselves economically here, okay? And we have to invest in the military. Fun. However, the more the army costs daily political power in a desperate attempt to raise revenue can also lower the amount of investment to the military, freeing up capital for other projects. Great, great. I get to play the game of, like, economic development with a what is a one-province minor in the Himalayas. Wonderful. Well, I suppose we can't really do anything here except maybe focus on infrastructure because I can't build anything, mind you. So that's all that we're going to do. There's literally no point in building anything else here, my friends. The Pretender in Paro to the west of our capitalized Paro granted to Cheshiring Penjor by the former King Ungyen with the promises that the Cheshiring Penjor would rule the kingdom following the later king's death. Only the haste of Songnam Tokyo Dorji's incarnation of the young prince, Jigme Wonchuk, prevented him from taking the throne for himself, and the noble has fumed in the West ever since. Oh, oh God, he has a small stockpile of farms as well as the late king's uh, Ungrin raven crown. Okay, um, with no wives or sons to speak of, it's generally thought that Teshring Penjor will die by the time Jigme's son is of age to inherit the traditional sheet seat and heir of the kingdom of Paro. Great, great. Great, great. There's, there's a guy who wants to overthrow the government. Fun. Oh, look at this. The Treaty of Foot Scolding. So we actually have a treaty with the Indians, as it talked about, which is going to be able to give us some political power and some construction speed and factory output, because that is going to mean basically nothing considering everything that we already have. Great. Sonam Tapki Dori returns. The king primary advisor, Gonzim Sonam Tapki Dori, has returned from his mission to the Bartia commune. As the main conduit to the outside world, he brings an assortment of gifts and treasures that he obtained while abroad, including Wilt Creek vintage rifles and various luxury goods. Ooh, that's going to give me five units. Of I don't even get like 500. I get five guns. Five. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? I I'm still missing 144. I'm producing one a month. Wait, the Zobdring makes his move. After years of planning, it seems that the Zobdring is aiming to make some sort of power play against the king. Rumors are spreading across Bhutan that the brother of the Zobdring, Choki Getchen, traveled to India to meet with a prominent agrarian Mohandas Gandhi, pledging to the establishment of a socialist theocracy. In return for his help, the Indian leader declined to support it. Oh, oh, that snake. Oh God, minus 50% stability. Am I America here with how low my stability is? becoming. Well, there's the Anglo-Afghan war. Guys, I have my own shit to deal with. All right, I'm getting an option for a new guard who's apparently related to one of the people that is possibly hostile to me, but he's really good. He is literally an efficient sociopath. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no need for changes. Increase my stability. I don't want any of that crap. Uh-uh. Wait, Jigme addresses the court with rumors of Zabdring leading a coup against the King Brewing. Jigme has decided to inject a fair of normalcy back to Bhutan politics. It's long been divided between traditionalists by the Tershing Penjor and reformers led by Sonam Tongpei, and making an address that plays to one or two sides, Jigme could bring the debate back around from assassinations to tax collection. I don't even know what to do. Seek a compromise, favor the reformers. I don't want to boost any of the... I, I literally don't know what's going to happen. Just seek a compromise. It's probably going to weaken us a little bit. Oh, God. But maybe maintain peace and stability. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, my God. So many events. Democracy record in Australasia, uh, Gallo seizes control of Ecuador, and an agricultural crisis in Ukraine. The world is peaceful. No, no, no need to worry. Large number of communities in the north of the kingdom have taken up for the pilgrimage towards Tala Monastery, armed as though they were an army. Tershing Pendur has written to the king, warning about this armed mob, though he has not offered his assistance in dealing with them. Um, uh, uh, send a force north to meet him, I, I guess. Was that the right move? I don't know if that was the right move. Absolutist coup in White Ruthenia. All right. 
right. Strange reports from the South. Sonam Talkvia Doherty has warned us of the rumors he has heard and fetched Scott so I can't say all these things. They speak of a strange caravan marching north towards central Bataan, invading villages and fellow travelers. It's possible this party is a group of the Zobdrung supporters or even just a gang of bandits. Well, have him personally investigate. Okay, let's do that. It's not like I can use my political power here for anything anyway, so why not? Safety of the air. Since the birth of 1929, the son of the king, Jigme Dori, has lived with his father, being taught the basics of governance, religion, and warfare by his closest counselors. With the capital growing more dangerous, we have to send him abroad. Uh, better is Hindi and enroll in a formal school. Sure. Oh, no. Clash is around, Panaka. Okay. Okay, so we're apparently our army as great and developed and amazing as it is, somehow sucks, and we're losing even more authority. Sonam Takpe confirms the rumors. After bribing some village elders, Sonam Takpe is confident that the rumored caravan is both real and heading towards the Trunksa Valley. With this information in hand, he believes the caravan may be smugglers attempting to sell arms to Zabrig and his allies. With the enemy known to be moving on the roads between the king's personal forces and Sonam's expedition, the Gongsman is now presented with a decision. The king's liaison with his forces has suggested that he could send his scouts riding up the main road to mobilize the royal guard, allowing them to set up ambush bush and catch the rebels between the two forces or he's confident that his own forces can take the smugglers and plan to march north as soon as possible to catch them while they're stuck on the main road hmm uh, send the outriders north to warn the king let's launch an ambush let's do it socialist victory in russia oh, oh great great no our forces were ambushed when our loyal forces sided the caravan on the main road today moved to engage the mysterious opponents unfortunately our patrol wasn't prepared to meet them and a storm of modern machine gun fire Oh my god! What did I do? The weak patrol was unable to advance in the face of such advanced weaponry and were forced to retreat. What our forces initially thought were allied reinforcements turned out to instead be more rebels who completely routed our soldiers. With the complete destruction of our patrols, the chance of intercepting the armed caravan is nearly impossible. Sharing Penjor offers banners? No! The king will lead the army! Exiled military leader from Tibet arrives? Oh my god, buddy. Why do you have a mushroom on your head? Chirp. I don't care. Uh, recruit him. Yeah, we're gonna need all the help we can get. He's from Tibet. He might betray us. I don't know at this point. I'm just hitting buttons. It's not like I can do anything else. Yep, oh, yeah, and there goes Russia entering into civil war. Wonderful then. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You're looking about as peaceful as I feel, Russia. The Zabdrung is located. Hey, okay, the king must act, right? Right? Majority of the court feels that while Zabdrung remains alive, he's a threat to the Bhutan stability. Yes, the king. The king must do something. A march on Talo. Yes, we're going to attack. The march from Panaka to nearby Talo Monastery has started to reveal how powerful the Zabdrung has become over the last decade. Our army has been harassed consistently since turning south, and the hope of catching the opponent off guard is dashed. Oh, God. Um, um, well, let's see what happens. Wait, now we're launching a siege? While the king's army outnumbers those within the monastery by hundreds of men, it is armed with small arms and a cannon. It's become increasingly clear that open confrontation would be devastating both to the royal army and Jingmei's credibility. Okay, well, it's time for a, a siege, then... I've still done nothing in this game. Samten Jamsho presents a solution. The king's closest ally among the monastic body, Samten Jamsho, has returned from a meeting he had with many of the monks within the temple. Invoking the ancient role of the Bhutanese monks as mediators of peace, the monks in the Tala Monastery would be willing to arrange a meeting between the king and the Zabdrung, nominally to determine the fate of the young upstart. While chairing Penjor has expressed his concern regarding the safety of such a meeting, Samten Jamsho is adamant that the monks could guarantee the safety of the king. Such a meeting would thrust the king into the lion's den, but it may be our only chance to avoid bloodshed of an open conflict. Let's do it. I don't know what's going to happen, but let's do it. Ah, yep, Jigme gets ambushed. The meeting between Jigme Wenchuk and his rival began quarterly, but it soon became clear that Zobdring had little intention to surrender and plead forgiveness. He instead began to berate the young king, mixing insults with threats, and as his terrain reached a fever pitch, one of the king's personal guards drew his blade and began to advance on the Zobdrung, provoking a frenzied response from the young Lama's supporters. A large group of warriors armed with knives and swords fell upon the king and his entourage. Several of his guards fell to their blades, and the king himself only barely escaped badly wounded. Oh my god. Can I not catch a freaking break here, buddy? End of the royal coalition. In response to the treachery of the Zamjung, Sharing Penjor has claimed that an evil spirit has possessed the leader of Tala Monastery, and it was the duty of any faithful man to smite this demon. The fight for the fortress was short, brutal, and bloody. The royal forces stormed the main gate of the monastery courtyard, only to be met with a torrent of machine gun fire from raised positions. With the brunt of the assault broken by the defenders, the tide rapidly shifted as the undisciplined levy attempted to escape the deadly courtyard. Sharing Penjor was cut down as he attempted to reform his soldiers, and it was not long before the royal forces shattered entirely. The rebel forces raided their camps near the monastery, capturing the dying king and seizing supplies and weapons. With the road to Panaka open and no remaining forces, who could oppose the Zobdrung's growing army? The Zobdrung seemed poised to capture the capital. I tried to support the king, but now 
Um, he's gone. Wait, so what? It's, it's no, the revolution is still not over. It's almost 1937. I haven't been able to hit anything. What is going on? The heir and Gonzim disappear. Son of Takidori, the heir to the Bhutanese throne, and Jigme Dori Wanchuk are considered by most of the royal court as only men which could save Bhutan. However, they're nowhere to be found, with the king having sent them south with Son of Tape in the opening days of the conflict. That's, yeah, that's all gone. That's all gone. We're, we're screwed. We're screwed. So now the monasteries recognize Zab. Drung as the leader. And what even is this? The Zung Drachun is a council of monks from across the country, united with the goal of furthering monastic interest. They're led by the five learned masters, the Lopins, each an expert in a different theological field. Okay, so that's, wait, they're, they're national populists, but they're monks. Well, uh, the Zabdrung is ascendant, with the military forces loyal to the late king completely eliminated, the monastic body rapidly expressing a change of loyalty, and the remaining noble leaders withdrawing to their Zong fortresses. The Zabdrung and his allies stand as the preeminent force in Bhutan. Not since the days of the Nawang Namyal has the Zabdrung wielded this much temporal power. So I am, like, th I'm, I'm basically the Bhutanese pope, and I'm in charge. Great! At least it somewhat fixes us politically here a little bit. And hey, now I can finally choose something. Yay, end of the revolution. With the fighting in the countryside coming to an end or to a close, our government has finally afforded the opportunity to tackle the problems endemic to our nation. Only take a year to actually address in the first place. Reforming the dysfunctional systems endemic to Bhutan and our vision of a perfect government. Which just doesn't actually give us any bonuses. It just fixes a little bit of the problems that we already have. Fun. Look at you. You are basically the Bhutanese Pope. Look at this stylish hat, buddy. Hey, hey, I like your eyebrows, man. Monarchy is restored in Georgia, and religious nationalist fundamentalists are the ones who that are in charge of Bhutan. Beautiful. All right, there's the end of the revolution. Next step on here, solidify our grip. Go ahead and fix this. I guess that depending upon our varying actions, we would have been able to strengthen the dynasty or get a nation of Buddhists. But in this case... Now that we have our council in charge, a new regime cannot hope to rely on the goodwill of those who once opposed us. We have, oh, oh God, we're purging. Um, no great Zong was built upon a rotten structure. More like Great Dong being built upon a rotten structure. Ah, ah. Yeah, we're going to murder a lot of people. Canadian Parliament suspended. Exerting royal prerogative, King Edward VIII has taken an unprecedented move in suspending the Democratic Canadian Parliament and establishing what is essentially an absolute monarchy. Whoa, hey, I do not think that I have seen that before. Oh, whoa, Edward. Edward, you saucy boy, you. And now that we've solidified our grip, next step up here is to murder some religious leaders in order to solidify our uh, 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 control over the hierarchy. Don't look at me like that, chat. What? The hell stability returns to the United States. The United States of America has been in a worsening political crisis. However, not anymore. President Charles Curtis, seeing the situation, has been able to deal with the syndicalists and the socialists and the populists. What? I've never seen the AI America. Did they avoid the Civil War? America avoided the Civil War. Canada went absolute monarchist, and the United States actually preserved their government? What the f- fuck what the hell you know i'm saying this right now it's bhutan bhutan is clearly the reason as to why all these other places are stable I, i'm gonna take credit because i have not been able to do anything here all right there's a lot of murder i guess the next step on here show our strength in assembling raiders which is gonna be focusing on building up the military exalt the buddhist canon and force monastic primacy build more zongs wait what so this i think is gonna strengthen our stability over the country i think i think that is probably what i'm gonna need to do that and expand the capital so that we can go ahead and fix things here because i I don't see this necessarily doing anything just yet. You know, yeah, yeah. We're going to build more Zongs and then expand the capital. <laughs> and then King Edward passes away. He was not crowned the king of Westminster Abbey, has once again made headlines as the first king to face death by assassination. An American anarchist! Wait! He killed many of his closest advisors, instantly sending King Edward into a coma from which he would never awake. While hope was held out for King's recovery, it has been announced today the king was too far gone to recover, which has led to a succession of Prince Albert, viewed by many as quiet and socially awkward. Oh, Oh my god, I have not seen this happen yet. What? <laughs> oh no. Nah, and the Welsh are fighting the British. Great. And by British, I mean I mean the 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 uh the, the socialist variants. Honestly, at this point, I'm getting more amusement out of the world than what's even going on with my own game here. The Entente is moving to reclaim Europe already? Already? It's only been, it's, it's 1937 still. What home nation secure independence? It appears the Union of Britain, unable to fend off the Scottish and Welsh rebels, says the English have forced to a series of humiliating peace treaties. <laughs> 
Oh, that's funny. That That's funny. That's looking way more peaceful over here now, gotta say. All right, time to renovate our Zong. Zongs are fortified monasteries will serve as religious, military, administrative, and social centers. Uh, so we get a religious focus. We'll say they're forts. Why not both? A, eh? okay, uses more political power. There's no need for expansion. Yeah, no, why not both? Land fort as well as stability and war support. Yeah, I'll take that. Indian Bhutanese relations break down. In response to the recent appointment of Subhash Chandra Bulls as the chairman of the Indian National... Oh, God, no, that's the tiger guy. That's the guy that we had last time. Oh, ha, 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 that, that's going to be fun. Uh, these diplomats have been turned away from the Indian border, which is significantly tightened following Bulls' ascension. It seems that a new chairman promises to cease all negotiations with reactionary powers. <laughs> oh, God, that's not good. Yeah, there goes the Balkan War then. And let's see, now that we've gone and completed these focuses for show our strength as well as enforce monastic primacy, that means that we've gotten some options here to actually manage over on the side. We can enforce monastic primacy in order to be able to strengthen our position, and simultaneously, we can start raiding Tibet and India. Well, that looks like fun. I guess while we do those things, next step on here is to focus on either decentralization or, wait, no, can we choose this other? No, 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 it has to be decentralized, increasing reliance on... <laughs> because we brought in the monasteries, because we're monks, we need to use other people for basically slave labor. Great, great. Yeah, that, that's totally what I wanted for this game. Religious fundamentalist slave labor. Well, I want to build the nation, so you know what? That's what we're going to do. We're going to try to build ourselves economically before anything else. That's how the Spanish Empire joined the Ontario. Oh, they did. Uh, well, that's spicy. My source state clears on the Princely Federation. That means everything is going to go to shit down here, which means that I'm sure that the Bartia commune is going to get way stronger, which is going to be a big threat to me. Great. T to to totally wonderful. That's what I want. Zabdrung Suntral demands authority. When the first Zabdrung Rinpoche in Awang passed away almost 300 years ago, the Jig Kempo, Druk Desi, and Penlops conspired to cripple the power of the Zabdrung reincarnation by recognizing three different incarnations of the Great Lama, the Mind Incarnation, the Speech Incarnation, and the Body. While the line of the Body Incarnation died out, the Mind Incarnation currently rules over the nation, and the Speech Lama continues to exist in a sort of powerless limbo. They want to promote another- No, 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 no. No, I am the incarnation of everything. Screw you. You cannot beat my hat, buddy. Oh no, Tibet is gone. Oh, the Sichuan click takes it. Huh, you know, I could raid India. Mm, why not? What's the worst that could happen? Oh, I thought for a second they declared war on me. Okay, no. It just, uh, did anything happen? No? Is that, is that it? No, we didn't get anything. The doorway to the Dwarves lie open. More than 70 years ago, the noble leaders of Bhutan valiantly defended our rightful lands in the Assam and Bengal Dwarves and the murderous British and the Indian underlings. Since our defeat at the hands of these godless conquerors, our great kingdom has been reduced a little more than a puppet of our southern neighbors. If we stand this injustice no longer, we'll send out a band of our finest warriors to reassert control over the northern Dwarves and right the wrongs committed against our ancestors. Chances are that the Indian menaces are too busy fighting their own brothers to notice our intrusion, and if we're successful, we'll reap the wealth of these fertile lands. Ooh. Let's do it. Let's do it. Results of our raid, our war band was returned, their wagons heavy with the spoils of war. Even more importantly, we've proven ourselves our neighbors and secured the dis wait, we've proven ourselves to our neighbors and secured the disputed lands we sought. The taxes and loot brought in through this victory will strengthen our control. Oh, that's beautiful. Hey, that's some actual decent bonuses here. Not gonna lie. That's pretty good. Pretty good. But it's 1938, and I still have one fucking research slot. Am I ever gonna be able to do anything? Agitator in the South. <laughs> Nah, expel him. We're not dealing with that crap. My hat will broke no challenge. And there we go. Now we can actually take steps to develop the country in 19 freaking 38. I guess there's only one thing left to do to develop, and, th and that's murder everyone inside of the country that disagrees with us. We do not wish to merely rule over Bataan as the successors of the weak and cowardly Wenchuk clan. We will purge the legacy of failures, starting with the greedy reformists who sold our country to the Indians for a paltry price. Enemies and traitors lurk in every Zong and monastery, and Bhutan will not truly be free until they are all silenced. Add the Great Purge, which grants weekly stability minus 0.5. Let's do it. Oh my God, finally, finally, fund monastic schools. Please give me a research slot. Our intellectual energies cannot be devoted solely to the material world. By placing our wealth in the monastic school, we can ensure that a new generation of wise monks may rise up to help guide Bhutan. Yes, as though they've been doing that already. What? Colombia elects a leopard as a president. As the Colombian elections come to an end, it's very clear that the Le Leopardos have gained the majority. There, however, already appears to be a split between the president and the next. Oh, wait, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. It's not an actual leopard. I got real confused there for a second. Don't get me wrong. In this mod, that is a very real possibility that could happen. 
No, that, that, that's absolutely true. Um, That's just funny, though. Trouble with Lanshapo. We've received reports that a number of the Lanshapo village leaders have begun to come to closer contact with the Gorka League, complaining of discriminatory practices and looking for ways to resist the central government. Well, now is no time to solve the issue with Lanshapo. Perhaps we should address the development before things get sent out. Perhaps taxes could be eased slightly, central, clamp down on these... Yeah, clamp down on these dissidents increase the central authority of the government that's right or wait no 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 no. hold on if we do that it increases authority but it hurts our political power and it increases the popularity of social liberalism i don't want that tell you what just lighten their taxes just just make them a little bit happier that's fine i like how the party of radicals in this is the social liberals like in a monastic nationalist religious fundamentalist society the radical party are the market liberals those damn capitalists we don't need them we'll still just give welfare through monasteries crushing the bureaucrats when we first crushed the royalists and assumed control of bhutan various groups throughout the country pledged themselves to our rule and accepted our dominion over the kingdom however the loyalty of these bureaucrats has always been dubious at best and there's considerable chance that they conspire among themselves planning the downfall of our most holy rule recently reports have come to the inner circle of our administration that various officials have been caught speaking ill of our rise reminiscing about the former king we're spreading rumors about the existence of a living one chick heir and this is more than enough justification that the reign of these groups must be brought to an end uh uh, we crushed the, the we, we crushed them. Yeah, still no stability in sight. Demanding military loyalty for far too long, the temporal lords of Bataan have had a monopoly on true military force, while the monasteries and villages arm and train militias to protect themselves from bandits. True levies and armed knights are purely led by the Penlops and the Royalists. With the king's army crushed, the only force left in the country that threatens to undermine us is the combined power of the Penlops, who command a small personal army, but this won't stand. Either disappear the ringleaders, which weakens their central authority, or spend more political power and strengthen it. Well, we clearly need loyalists, of course. And here we go. Time to revive the diarchy. It's been centuries since the reign of the first Lama Bhutan, and the time following the dual system of government that he imposed to the country has been twisted beyond recognition. But once again, Bhutan will be led by a Lama. And and, and, and I, I, don't, I don't mean like a, a Lama animal, though admittedly that would be pretty damn funny here. Yes, the diarchy. Now what, what happens? Anything? Any developments? Do we, do we get to choose anything? Uncertain times, any other stuff we can choose over here? Address the... Ah, okay, that's what we can do now. We fixed ourselves mostly politically, even though I'm not hardly gaining any political power at all here anymore. So I guess it's time to finally address the military. Our military forces are in desperate need of reform. It is 1938, and we are just now starting to fix this. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do in this game. We have to choose between expanding our loyal forces or focusing on a centralized army. Wait, did I? No, because I lost authority, it's going to stop me from developing my freaking country until I can enforce primacy. And I can't end the purge until I have less than 25% stability. How is that a requirement? How is that a requirement? What is wrong with this game? Advisors protest against new projects. No, we need to evolve to survive. I don't give a shit how much it damages me. I need it. I am not weakening my economy more than, than, than it already is. We still haven't built a road and it's been almost three years. Three years, one road. God, it's like we're located out of Ohio or something. And now a poor harvest. In the country of Bataan, farming is deeply tied to the Buddhist canon. The name for agriculture is Sanam, the word for blessing. Hey, yeah, right. Let the local doors with it cut back on the commodity tax for this year. Or perhaps if we introduce rice crops to the south. Either way, all of it hurts my stability. Really? Well, I mean, I guess I need less stability in order to be able to finish the thing. So sure, we reintroduce rice crops to the south. Grow more food, people. All right, there's finally the military address. Now we can use the terrain, create a national doctrine, um, new weapons design, smuggle forward. Our okay, okay, what are we going to do? We need to decide. Are we going to promote regional leaders or... Or are we going to draw upon noble officers? This is going to strengthen my government slightly. It is simultaneously going to give me some reconnaissance, and it's going to give me bonuses towards mountaineers and core defense. But this side gives me more stuff for weapons. It's simultaneously going to allow me to manage military investment and equip specialized units to increase our overall tactics. I don't give a shit about this population factor because our country has no population to begin with. So you know what? We're, we're, we're just going to go down the whole new weapons design and, and poos that here, I guess. I don't know. But hey, we can finally start recruiting a single division. We have the manpower and the equipment for it now. Oh, Lord, the Bartia commune is actually going really hard into the Dominion of Delhi. Okay, that's... Uh, 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 well, I mean, technically, am I? No, I'm not socialist. I'm populist. Okay, well, this could be a problem. Oh, shoot, wait, I can't draw a noble 
officers. Okay, so we have to promote regional leaders and reorganize the structure. Right, right, okay. Y y yeah, great. Well, that's nice, I guess. Halfway through 1939, still haven't done anything yet. Oh, finally, 1939. And we have 1936 weapons. Do you see how this could potentially be a problem? The Second Sino-Japanese War. Okay, 1939, that's, that's fun. Uh, <laughs> oh God, everything is on fire around the entire world and I can't do anything. Ah, and finally, the Second Well Creek. Okay, only took a, a little bit of time for that to occur. Oh my God, the communist. When did you kill Spain? When did any of this happen? New rice crops harvested. Hey, while rice has been one of the central crops in Bhutan since before the time of the first stop drunk, it could only be planted in certain regions of the country as the banks of the rivers which covered the great valleys of Thimpu, Panaka, Trongsa, and Paro in the lowlands of the south, tubers like yams and taros make up the bulk of the crop. So we've invested in rice production in a war game. I, okay, sh sure. That's nice, I guess. 1940, we're just now figuring out how basic artillery works. Ah, uh, yes, our grand military industry. We got weapons too. We, oh, what am I doing with my life? What, what, what am I doing? I, I don't understand it anymore. But with the militias finally reorganized, that means we can finish the military reforms, which is the last thing that we can do in here, I think. We've greatly improved the structure and competency of our armed forces. Drafting a reform plan, we can follow forward. It will remove the militias and upgrade our army. And yeah, I, I guess. Norwegian Union has capitulated. What do you mean the Norwegian? Norwegian Union. Oh, Sweden. Wow. You're murdering things up here. Yeah, <laughs> Ukraine is going after Belarus too. Oh, are you a sad Cossack? You you look like a very sad Cossack. Okay, that's um th th that's that's the focus, right? Right? Is the, is there anything else we can do? No? Is that is that genuinely the end of Bhutan? Have I been doing this the entire time in order to just get nothing? I still have a constant cr What? Oh god, no. We need to invest more in the military. God dang it. Well, I guess now we can actually build up a political power base since at least we don't have a focus to choose anymore. That's lovely. Tukhachevsky unites Russia. The Red Bonaparte leads Russia. Okay, well, <laughs> oh, that, that, this could be a little bit spicy. The Red Napoleon. The comet. That is actually a really cool title, not gonna lie. Oh, that means a super aggressive Russia, I'm guessing. But hey, check it out. We're at the end of 1940, basically. And you know what we did? We managed to reform Bataan so that we no longer have that ticking reduction of authority, which is awesome. Except now there's a little bit of a problem. We still don't have a developed economy. We still have two factories. And it's almost 1941. What am I doing with my life? I have to wait to get the political power so I can get cottage industries, which reduces my construction. But hey, at least after 140 days, it gives me a civilian and then a military factory. At least there's that. Whoa, Ukraine looking thick, boy. Hey, what are you doing over here? Mr. Uh, Vasil, oh my God, his serene highness, the illustrious pan Headman of all Ukraine? What? Oh, man, dude. Okay. Oh, the Bartia commune was pushing, but now, no. Now it's starting to fall. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, man, that is a lot of fighting and a lot of sacrificing. I, I really, really wish that we could just invade from the north and take out a bunch of stuff. But I don't have the mo population or the industry to actually sustain any of that. Hey, awesome. And now that we have a cottage industry, which means we have, you know, two civvies that are working, which is simply wonderful. Yes, I, 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 I totally wanted that. Now, in May of 1941, we can get our second milk factory. What am I doing? I hate this. I absolutely hate this. What am I doing? Oh no, the Kaiser is dead. How how sad. How sad that this world that this is happening and I don't give a shit. Cause hey, check it out, right? Right? See this army? See this great glorious army? Boom. Edit. We're increasing our strength, sort of. The fall of Paris. Finally, the second Will Krieg is actually happening here. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, and how can I forget? The entire time that we've been doing this here, we've, of course, had ideological loyalty because, naturally speaking, with Bhutan having such an incredibly low population, we've needed to build up a reserve of manpower the entire time as it's the only way that we've been able to supply men into the back burner to recruit as we've been trying to produce more equipment. Lovely. Not that I've even been able to use any of it from the beginning anyway, but, you know, it is what it is. The United States of America declares on Denmark. What? For what reason? Oh my God, it was a war goal to attack and take over Denmark. For why? For, for, for Greenland? Maybe Greenland? Italian National Social State has capitulated. Oh, whoa, wait, the Partia Commune. You're starting to make gains again against the Dominion of Delhi. Okay. Germany's beating things over here and oh boy. What, wait, the provisional British. Oh, hey, hey, Bernard Montgomery. Look at you, supported by the Kingdom of Canada. But don't worry, guys, because we finally, finally developed artillery. 
We can now start producing some of that. A second peace with honor. The United States of America declared war on the Republic of Britain. What is even happening right now? Oh, no, wait. That was the fall of the communists. And with the fall of the communists, that means that the French are now back in charge. Uh, which is now a French kingdom and a puppet of the German Empire. Okay. Oh my God. And now Germany decides to go after the East. <laughs> Great, great. Yeah, that, that seems, yeah, that seems lovely here. The United States declares war on the Republic of South Africa. What are they doing down here? They're allied with, the, oh my God. That means that the United States is declaring war on Germany. <laughs> the liberals are siding with the communists. Well, you know what? At this point, there's literally nothing to do. I'm also simultaneously realizing that despite the fact that I am the hermit kingdom, I can't get anything, like any kind of claims. I get nothing on anything. There is no continued focus tree. There's no nothing. Everything that I've been doing up until this point seems to be freaking pointless because it has just been a game of trying to reform Bhutan and I can't get rid of these awful, terrible effects upon my country. What is the point in this? Screw it. We're justifying on Sikkim. We got a claim state on him. We're going after him. And the Pope gets shot. You see this, guys? We're going to be creating an elite unit, something that's actually capable of attacking. I call it the Thunder Dragons because this is the only division that will actually have at least some artillery. Hey, our justification is done. Yay. Let's go ahead. Wait, what? The Kingdom of Sikkim is guaranteed by Tibet and the Delhi. Really? Why? I wonder what, on what grounds. Well, screw it. I guess that means we're just going to go to war anyway. I don't care anymore. I have been bored this entire freaking game, man. And we're not breaking through. Why are we not breaking through? Because they have so much freaking defense. <sighs> all right. Cancel all strikes. We're not doing that. Nope. Not going to work. Maybe we can bait them into attacking us. Maybe. Before I lose all of my manpower. Yeah, they actually are attacking us. How are we doing? Hey, actually some real serious defense. Great. Yeah, that's, that's what I'd like to see. Well, maybe from here we can at least bait them into attacking us because the more they attack us, the more that they weaken themselves, the less equipment they have, then maybe we'll actually be able to kill them. In fact, I'm going to retreat back and just let them continuously attack me over and over again here. This should be fine. This should be totally fine. Oh man, they are holding. They're actually holding and they're continuously launching attacks at me, which means I'm just going to continuously do damage against them and grind up my guys. Wait, that sounds a little bit weird to say. My God, these guys are continuously training and fighting. I, it's been going on for weeks. How many men have we killed at this point? Wait, I can't even see any of this. All right, hold on, where are we? We Okay, yeah, we lost 2,000 in that initial attack. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, th I, I, think, I think we're doing some good damage. Yeah, seems, seems pretty decent. Also, how the hell does Sikkim have a larger factory than I do? Wait, what? French social? Yeah, I don't have any part of this. I can't do anything. How does Sikkim, of all things, have a bigger industry than I do? Collapse of the Portuguese Empire. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Sucks to suck. Well, I guess if we're going to do any kind of attacking here where we're located in the world, we might as well get some new divisions because that's all we can do. I'm, I'm going to call my mountaineers the Bhutanese boobies because they're, they're, they're the mountains. You know, it's like the mount. like the. Okay, listen, there's a joke here and I can't really say much more, but you all get what it is that I mean. Well, I guess uh, just continue to hold. I continue to get some <laughs> more experience. It's not like I'm going to be able to do anything from here anyway. Have they stopped attacking? No, 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 no. That can't happen. That can't happen. Uh-uh. Move one of these back. And maybe they'll attack me if there's only one. Will you attack now? No? No? Is that, that it? You're, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not gonna, really? I can't grind you out anymore? Oh, wait, no. What if they're actually like out of manpower? Are they out of manpower? No, they're not out of manpower. Wait, no, that's deployed. Oh my God. They're already on all adult serve. Oh, they actually are straight up out of manpower. Okay. Wait a damn minute. Oh, no, wait, never mind. There they go. There they go. Yes. 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 Fight. Fight. Throw yourself. Throw yourself at me. All right. Can we break? No. <laughs> we still don't have the ability to break through. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work, guys. Because like, like, what do, they, what do they even have? What do they have? Intel wise, do they have any manpower? Maybe some? Maybe some. We probably bled through their entire supply, but let's see what happens here. Oh, God, they do so much more damage to us than we do to them. We physically cannot break through. Oh, my God, we take so much damage. That's okay. It's okay. If they throw themselves at me here, we'll just slightly reinforce. Do a little bit more damage and stack it up here. That's all we can do. Hopefully, just keep on continuously baiting them in so we can do more damage. Oh, uh, yes, Dutch East Indies. Thank you for a convoy. That's... Going to be so useful in my mountains. Victory of the Bharatiya Com They won. The Bharatiya Commune actually won over here. Oh my lord, what? 
I am well and truly stuck, I think. I, I, I don't think there's going to be anything that I'm going to be able to do here. Um, maybe, maybe send over these Mountaineers. Maybe they'll be able to do something. Because, yeah, yeah, sending these guys into attack, they do more damage. But with the forts and everything else in here, they're just, they're not able to really do much. I don't, I don't have the ability to break through here. It's all right. That's not going to work. We're going to waste all of our valuable equipment in that scenario. So we're going to bring these guys back over here and focusing on training them up. The more of these guys that we can bleed out over on this side, the better. And then honestly, I'm going to need to start justifying on something. If I want to do anything, like maybe Tibet or well, no, Tibet is gone. It's going to be the Qing. Do I want to take on the Chinese or do I want to take on the Indians? Eh, you know, India seems like a nice bet. Why don't we just go for that then? This is probably horrible for me, but I don't care anymore. <laughs> Sick of us actually out of manpower. Uh, but it doesn't make a difference. I still won't be able to break through. There you go. The justification for conquering uh, d d d that thing is done. Okay, well, um, still probably means nothing. But you know what at least we're going to do? We're going to use our glorious military industry and we're going to try to conquer India. Because clearly Sikkim has gone so well. I'm realizing in all of our divisions, we still have minus 50% attack and defense. Like, this... This is not something we can get rid of. Why is this a thing? Can I even break through? Do we even do anything? No, nope, we just we, we just got to hold. That's all we can do is sit here and hold. Oh my God, I'm technically realizing I don't have anywhere to retreat to. If I can't retreat while all this is happening, my units are going to continuously get destroyed if they attack on everything. Oh no. It's okay though. I guess we're, we're holding. We're kind of holding. We're... we're Oh, this could be pretty bad. This could be pretty bad. I, <laughs> it's starting to slip up in some areas. I was not able to take anything that they don't border, so I have nowhere I can actually retreat back to. I'm realizing I may have chosen the wrong enemy to go here and fight. Um, This could be a little bit of a problem because now I'm being attacked by Sikkim again too. No, 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 no. They're not seriously doing this. No, 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 no. There's like physically nothing I can do. I can't break through anything. <laughs> Damn you. Damn you, Mutan, and your shitty bonuses. Wait, they stopped. They stopped. Oh, okay, they actually, they stopped temporarily. Yes, we're going to be able to do something here. Come on, just keep on cycling now. Don't let our forces falter. We need to just send over little reinforcements. Keep on holding out. We are gradually losing our manpower even then. Even though our defense is so high, we're still taking more losses than we can actually maintain here. I will eventually run out of manpower. Come on, just keep on cycling. How many men have we lost at this point? Okay, I've lost 30,000, but Sikkim has lost 60K and we have managed to kill the 165 Baratayakami people. Okay, we might actually be able to do this. It's not, eh, actually, wait, I realize. Hold on. There's there's no one invading them. I'm just attacking these people for no damn reason. Yeah, oh, we're taking more damage than I could probably risk, and we are still losing equipment. Okay, well, Fortress Buster? No, no, no. Scavenger. Steal the enemy's equipment. That's all that we want to do. I can't seem to produce any of it myself anyway. <laughs> we're still running out of manpower. We're still running out. <laughs> Oh, crap. Now they're starting to attack here again. That, that's not good. That's really not good. Quick, last stand. Defend. I will keep on using this as many times as I have to to defend myself here. Damn it. And now I'm officially out of manpower. Uh, that's, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bleeding my country dry. We've already had to go up to extensive conscription. Damn it. Last stand again. All of you will become veterans and die for my cause. Oh my God. I think we did it. We, we, we ran out of manpower. Like we, we do not have anything else, but we have broken most of the equipment of the enemy. What are their losses? Oh my God. We have wiped out 600,000 of them. Hey, 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 that's something. And I've, Killed almost as many people as are in, in my entire country. All right, that, that, that's something. And even though I can't produce it, this is allowing me to steal anti-tank. I can steal mechanized. I can steal... Tr I'm stealing all their goods. Lovely. I can't even field any of these units. We're just going to put them in the Bhutanese Museum. The Ottoman Empire has joined our ally. What do you mean our ally? I, I, I'm not ally with anyone. Wait, is is Bhutan or Barthai... Are they at war with Germany? No, they're not. What, what is going on? You know... Honestly, I think at this point, I'm pretty much stuck here. I, I don't know what else it is that I can do. Uh, combat is continuously going to occur. I think I'm going to come back in like half an hour and see what the world has brought us because I, I sure as hell can't move from here. Okay, what did I miss? Uh, okay, not really much. It looks like around a year's past. We're <laughs> it's still the same thing. All of our guys are veterans. Nothing is changing. Literally not, nothing is changing. Like, what, what am I supposed to do here? What, lend lease? What am I even getting? Oh my God, I have stolen so much equipment from the enemy. <laughs> That's just funny. How many have we killed at this point? 1.6 million. Having lost almost 100,000 ourselves, almost the entire population of Bhutan. Well, what else is going on in the world? Oh my God, Russia died. <laughs> okay, Germany at one point killed Russia, it looks like. Or 
wait, no, Russia is part of Ukraine. It's a Russia is a puppet of Ukraine. <laughs> oh, oh, you, you beautiful boy, you. And wait, hold, hold on, is India? You're fighting more? Hold on. How are you at war with literally everyone over here? What are you doing? Oh my God, yes, yes, India. India, you did bite off more than you could chew. I may finally, in the end, get something. I've been playing since 1947. Oh my God, this is taking forever. I feel like this is a Millennium Dawn video, but it's an even worse nation than anything I've ever played. Oh my God, I'm actually able to attack. I get attack. Yes, those are my first units surrounded and actually destroyed. That is the first encirclement that we've had this game. And it's 19 freaking 47, man. Yes, I could actually do something. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. That took forever. I, ah, ah, and look, look at this. Look at this. Look at how many points I have just from slaughtering all those Indians for so many years. Oh my God. Uh, yoink. Perfect. Perfect. It does not matter that any other power was involved there because Bhutan, the great thunder dragon empire takes everything. Now you're going to look at this and go, okay, oh my God, stack. Hey, where did all this manpower come from? How did you get all this? Well, look, even though we have absolutely no bonuses whatsoever, we have all of this is occupied currently. Like all of this is occupied. Like even though we don't get anything as cores, we have absolutely none of this as cores, right? Still, for whatever reason, because of just how many people are in India, we are still getting a percentage of the total population <laughs> that we're ruling over. This is literally a population of 300,000 ruling over 370 million. Holy crap. So obviously there's no way we can maintain that. Split it up? Sure. We split all these up into a whole bunch of little puppets. And if I actually manage to get the political power, I will be able to integrate Sikkim. But that doesn't hardly give me any population whatsoever. Another 148,000? Who really gives a shit? Nope. Instead, this is it. I think that honestly, after all this time, I am, I am done. The fact that the Thunder Dragon Empire was able to do this after 11 years of just continuous crap, I don't even know how entertaining this video is going to be overall. I know there's probably going to be huge chunks in this from just the sheer amount of crap that I had to go through. So I'll tell you what, if there is anyone that managed to stick through with this, with this video until the very end, through all the crap that Bhutan has to deal with, I think you all deserve a reward. But I can't exactly reward all of you because I don't know how many people are actually going to do this. So here's the secret word of the day. Bhutanese boobies. If you type that in the comment section and you put that there, I will select one of you for the next time that I do a video thing here, probably over the course of the next week or so. Well, that's not the next time I make a video. You know what I mean. The next time that I do something here, I'm going to do... Wait, wait. <laughs> the Isle of Man got bombed. Why would you nuke the Isle of Man? Why? Why? Under what? For what reason? <laughs> You heard it here, folks. Booting these boobies. Type it in the comments. I'll select one of you here to uh, to to get the next DLC. I, I will buy you Arms Against Tyranny here, right? See you all next time. Have a good rest of your day. Like, comment, subscribe. Goodbye, everyone.